What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Leftover Poppy, a.k.a. Puzzle Poppy, a.k.a. New York Game Awards nominated at Blessing Eddie O.U. Jr. Good morning, Greg. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Now we're getting official with it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> First off, it's cold, so I'm glad you got the we got the sweatshirt memo today. You oh know, yeah. It's, it's I I was chill in the year. I've been I uh, I've been talking about going to the gym and all this stuff, right? And I've been doing it the last five months. The I went yesterday uh -huh. and I was feeling myself yesterday. Feeling it. So much so I was like, oh man, you know, I'm gonna start rocking t shirts. You know, show my arms more sure. often, you know, like sure. kind of like, you know, feel myself a bit more. And then I woke up this morning. I was like, it's cold. I'm wearing the thickest sweatshirt I can find. Okay, that's good. I thought yeah. it was going to be the opposite where you look at yourself in the mirror. and You're like, no, it's like, oh, God, <laughs> another cupcake. <laughs> yeah, it's like I give up. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking go to Starbucks. Get like what a does the double gym smoke routine bacon. look like right now? How many minutes are we doing and what are we doing? You usually do like an hour. Is that um, the other day? I like every, a couple times a week. Okay. Yeah. I know I probably should go more, but it's the thing where I'm like You're doing I'm something trying to slow build enough. it. Yeah. Like I start off just once a week and then I'll do a sport the other day a, a week. We we're off season for sports. And by off season, I mean, we forgot to sign up for the winter season. That that's it. on that me. Do it. Yeah. Um, and so we, is, I, another, is this more captain drama? No, no, the captain no, no, no. Of the kind of funny in a mirror. Oh God. Don't get me started about the captain drama. I won't. <sighs> I, won't. I, got a lot, I got a lot of tea I can spill about snow bike. Mike. <laughs> um, but no, we got uh, soccer is coming up soon in a few weeks. And so we got that o over the horizon. Um, but yeah, I've added in a second a second um, uh, workout day. And then, yeah, once we get to soccer, it's going to be a consistent like every other day. I think is going to we're going to be having some good physical activity. Physical activity. Yeah. Get the good sweat going on. But yeah, I start off on the treadmill to like kind of get uh, get the warm up, get the body sure, going, sure, uh, go sure. for about like a mile or two, you go, two miles. What, you doing like a gold's gym? You doing like a you know, gym doing 24 hour fitness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do that and then I just work my way through the machines like usually I'll do like arms and then core and then depending on the day I might like rotate like do arms one day and then focus on core another day sure, sure. yeah interesting I'm not trying to like I'm not trying to get big or anything I'm no, not trying no. to like maintain you know, yeah exactly yeah. I'm trying to just make sure I stay healthy and I don't ex expire too sure. early you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's your uh, are you worried about your metabolism giving out yes because you do eat like there's no bar off. yeah yeah <laughs> it doesn't matter you're fine you know and that's the right? thing is I know I'm blessed <laughs> because I am uh like I have a, fr a friend, Yusuf, right? He talks about how Ni Nigerians to him are like the Saiyan race. <laughs> Saiyans okay. are from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and like Saiyan. they're Super Saiyan. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of like Superman where it's like they, they got to Earth and they're the supreme race of people. They're sure. very strong. They're all this shit. Yeah. Um, Goku. Goku. Power yeah. levels over 9,000. I've been on the Yeah, internet. exactly. Yeah, that's exactly how it goes. And so Yusuf is like, Dude, like, if, like you're Nigerian, like you know, blood, like you're, uh, you can eat whatever, and you're still gonna look good. Your metabolism's off the chain, yeah. all this stuff. And I'm like, I understand how blessed I am for that. Not every Nigerian is like the most fit person in the world, sure. but a lot of them are. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of them are. Uh, and so I am cherishing it for the moment that I have it. But sure. then I, I am, I think because I'm turning thirty this year, I am like, you're waiting for that to slow down. I'm really waiting that. for it to slow down. I'm kind of getting scared of it. And I also had like some days last year where I was vis visiting my sister. And like there was one day where she has a, like a scale and I don't have one in my in my apartment. So I step on the scale just out of curiosity as yeah, you do yeah. when you're in somebody else's bathroom. Yeah. I look at it and I'm like, that can't be right. I'm like, no, that yeah. I was like, that can't be correct. Yeah. And I told my sister that like, I, as soon as that happened, I got home. <laughs> you came downstairs, you're eating this giant plate. You're like, something's wrong with your scale up there. <laughs> no, but like I saw that and I was like, I got to change things. And so like yeah. I got home and I started yeah. like, that's when we started doing softball. And I was like, okay, I'm going to like try to actually be more uh, like, you know, be more active. And I text my sister or no, I'm hanging out with my sister or something like weeks or months later i tell her i was like dude when i stepped on the scale in your bathroom it changed things for me and she's like oh everybody steps on that scale and says the same thing i think the scales is mis miscalibrated and i'm like well all right well i'm already here so <laughs> i'm just i'm just keep I'm running uh kevin i assume you're seeing this in chat you had warned us you have been working on the soundboard and doing some tests people are saying uh bless is a little bit blown out a little bit louder uh yeah i'm just, i'm trying to figure out this is me being excited about my physical fitness he just loves exercise that much ladies and gentlemen 
You know what I love? What's that? Video game news. Okay. I hope none <laughs> no. of it's bad. Ah, fuck. Oh, Huge no. layoffs at PlayStation, new Pokemon announcements, and so much more. We'll get into all of it because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do and like this show, hey, Get the Kind of Funny membership over on YouTube and Patreon. You get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free. You get all the other podcasts ad-free. You get the ability to watch the other podcasts live as we record them like the games cast this afternoon. And, of course, you get my daily vlog series, Greg Way. I got a banger 20-minute episode going up today. 20 minutes? I'm using it like a, we've talked about this before, using it like a journal. So I'm very I'm feeling out some thoughts about home. What is my home? What happened? Home away from home. I went to <laughs> wrestling last night. It'll all make uh, sense when you listen to it, but it's not about wrestling, so don't worry about that. Um, of course, for a chance to be part of this show, go ahead and super chat. Uh, give us your thoughts, your opinions, and more on the daily game news, just like Onimus Prime already did, prepping his question for story number one. Uh, housekeeping for you. Can you recite the plot of Coyote Ugly after not having seen it for 20 years? I sure can. Watch Jesus. me do it on the Kind of Funny Podcast, youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Podcast services around the globe. Bless, he does it like shockingly well. And again, because it's not it's not even like, oh, this is what happens. This is what it's like. Here are very tiny details about the movie that I remember. The pizza oven burn. I was know? wondering, because there was a time yesterday where Tim comes out mid-podcast and yeah. it's like, Greg is an insane person. Yeah. I'm like, you say this every week. <laughs> like, What is it this time? And he was like, no, you don't Did understand. Did you hear the latest thing about no. the universe jump? No, what's the latest update? This is Are you a spoiler back? for the intro. Are you no, back no, in your no, right no, timeline? No, still very much not my timeline. This oh, is a spoiler for the very, very intro of the Kind of Funny Podcast. Because last week's Kind of Funny Podcast was about me acknowledging that I've jumped into a parallel dimension and I'm living here now. And you've noticed several things about me that aren't right for yep. the Greg you knew. This weekend, I was playing Helldivers with Khalif Adams and a couple others. And we got to the topic of Major League, the movie. Yeah. And we, he wanted it remade. I'm like, don't remake. He's like, oh, I guess you could bring everybody back. I'm like, not really. Charlie Sheen's dead. And he's like, no, he's not. And everybody's like, no, he's not. And I assure you, in my universe, Charlie <laughs> Sheen died. I, here's, what, here's what I'll say. Because I, I did hear that part. Like, yeah. Joey did come up to me. Like, I think I was eating lunch or I was grabbing a little crow out the fridge. And she was like, like, what do you think about Charlie Sheen? Like, is he alive? Like, and I was like, I was like, I think Charlie Sheen's alive. But if you told me he was dead, I would have believed you. I would have been like, yeah, it happened when all the Charlie Sheen shit happened. Like, a yeah, 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 the tiger blood and all that shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't blame you there. I think that makes sense. I think in your timeline, okay. yeah, like it didn't go well for him. In okay, our timeline, he just survived all the shit. It's weird he hasn't done anything. <laughs> you haven't heard of Charlie Feen forever, right? I mean, I think he stopped getting hired <laughs> after all the cocaine. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Streakin' 80 Easy, and Delaney Twanning. Today we're brought to you by Avatar, Braving the Elements, and Game Showdown. We'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Now wait, hold on. Is it Charlie Sheen or Martin Sheen? Because yeah, that's what I waffle and run. I'm pretty sure you're thinking of Martin Sheen. I would never confuse Martin Sheen, President Bartlett, with Charlie Sheen. All right. Which one was in Two and a Half Men? That's Charlie Sheen. Oh, okay. Sheen's his dad. Gotcha. And then there's Emilio Estevez from Mighty Ducks. That's his brother. I did know this. Yeah. Holy shit. You did or didn't? I, I did, just but I just it? forgot. Yeah, completely about it. But that is true. Got it. Thank you very much. Number one on the Roper Report. Sony announces significant PlayStation layoffs. We go to Wesley Yin Pool at IGN, but we're going to get all over the place. Sony has announced a significant round of layoffs affecting around 900 staff, or about 8% of its global PlayStation workforce. The layoffs affect a number of PlayStation Studios, including Insomniac, Naughty Dog, Gorilla, Fire Sprite, and, most significantly, PlayStation's London Studio. Alongside the layoffs, a number of in-development games are canceled, Sony said. I'm dropping in a quick uh, addition here from Jason Schreier's Bloomberg reporting. Uh, Jason writes, Gorilla Games is cutting 10% of its staff, roughly 40 employees, according to people familiar with the matter. We're going back to the IGN article now. In a blog post, outgoing Sony Interactive Entertainment boss Jim Ryan issued an update on what he called a, quote, difficult day at our company, end quote. We have made the extremely hard decision to announce our plan to commence a reduction of our overall headcount globally by about 8% or 900 people, subject to local law and consultation, uh, consultation I should say, processes, Ryan said. Kevin, your mic's live. Uh, employees across the globe, including our studios, are impacted. 
These are incredibly talented people who have been part of our success, and we are very grateful for their contributions. However, the industry has changed immensely, and we need to future ready ourselves to set the business up for what lies ahead. We need to deliver on expectations from developers and gamers and continue to propel future technology and gaming. So we took a step back to ensure we are set up to continue bringing the best gaming experiences to the community. End quote. Ryan published an email he sent out to staff earlier this morning and, re and re reassured PlayStation gamers that, quote, our plans for or organizing and streamlining are so we can continue to deliver the best gaming experiences possible, end quote. In the email to staff, Ryan said, quote, tough decisions have become inevitable, end quote, and that the layoffs affect employees across all SIE regions with several PlayStation studios affected. U.S. employees will be told today if they still have a job. In the UK, where labor laws require an, a consultation period uh, for mass layoffs, Sony has proposed shutting the PlayStation London studio, which had previously created VR games entirely. Ryan also announced layoffs at fellow UK studio Fire Sprite, which is working on a new narrative game. The status of that game is unknown. Elsewhere, Ryan announced reductions in various functions across SIE in the UK. In a separate blog post, Herman Holst, head of PlayStation Studios, confirmed the layoffs impact Spider-Man developer Insomniac, The Last of Us developer Naughty Dog, as well as Sony's US-based technology creative and support teams. Horizon developer Gorilla is also affected. I also go back to Jason's reporting and pull in this paragraph. Head of PlayStation Studios, Herman Hulse, said in a note to staff Tuesday that the company has decided to cancel several games in development. Quote, sometimes great ideas don't become great games. Sometimes a project is started with the best intentions before shifts within the market or industry result in a change of plan, end quote. If that wasn't enough, I want to call you back and talk about financials on the Sony side. Uh, Chris Scullion over at VGC reported, of course, on February 19th, what, just a week ago, two weeks ago? A new report calculates that Sony's value dropped by around $10 billion last week following its revised PS5 sales forecast. While Sony had previously hoped to ship a record 25 million PlayStation consoles during its current fiscal year ending in March, last week it said during its latest quarterly earnings results that it now expects to miss that target by 4 million units. Following the earnings report, Sony shares fell as much as 8.4% and closed down 6.5%, partly as a result of the revised PS5 sales forecast, but also partly due to the drop in operating margin in Sony's gaming business to 6%, compared to 9% in December quarter of uh, 2022 and 12 to 13 in the years before this, end quote. Now, we could easily roll right into talking about some of the other games and mass layoffs and stuff there, but we can start mm -hmm. here. We can start extrapolating. We can go from here. Yeah. Blessing. Day after day, time after time, we continue to talk about layoffs in this industry. It was the theme of last year. It's even worse this year. We continue to go. Eponymous Prime writes in to Super Chat, just like you can any time in the live show, and says, what's the solution here? $100 games, smaller games slash smaller budgets, or do we see day one for PS, uh, I'm sorry, for PC soon and multi-platform from first parties in a few years? Exclusives help, helping growth seem to be stagnant. Start from the top, Wes. Mm -hmm. What's the solution here? I mean, it depends on what problem you're trying to fix, right? Like, for me, when you ask me what is the solution here, I immediately go to workers, right? I immediately go unionization, like, protecting your workers' rights, making sure that in a scenario where people are being laid off, right, like, you are given the heads up and you're giving the severance packages and you're hopefully, like, being set up in a place where you can still go on and succeed even while after being laid off from a big company like this. One of the things I was making the rounds was um, a tweet. I, I think you might be in the That's process exactly of bringing pulling it, up. it up. Yeah, I wanted I was going to interrupt you. Yeah. yeah, Rick DeMuro is a verified Twitter account, a tech reporter in L.A. on KTLA Morning News. Uh, he tweeted uh, in response to the thing and said this. Sony PlayStation is laying off 900 people in cities. Uh, ch I'm sorry, incites changes to the way games are made, developed, distributed, dot, dot, dot. But the other major takeaway is how affected employees are being treated in various countries, no doubt due to regulations. In the U.S., dash, you're done today. In the U.K., dash, we're proposing to regulators the cuts that will and we'll let you know. In Japan, dash, you'll get a career support program to help you find a new gig. Yeah, and it's like, I think... This paints a very clear picture of the way we handle this in different areas, right? And I think here in the in the U.S. and like a lot of places in the West, it's like, well, you're done, right? Like as the corporation, as the people who are 
having to answer to shareholders, having trying to answer to the people at the uh, at the highest level who are you know have the most have the most money in this and also the most money in their pockets, right? Like those are the people that we have to be beholden to. And if you're on the worker level, if you're one of the people that are being laid off, we're not thinking about you, right? We're just thinking about our own pockets and that's how things sort of ripple out from there. I think in a place where you are a worker and you're able to, to, to unionize and you're able to, you know, be within those systems that are helping you at the worker level. Like I think that's first and foremost, that's number one. I think in terms of the business of video games, I think that's where we're at right now. And I think it's a combination of all these things, right? Like Optimus Prime here in uh, the Super Chats, you know, lists a bunch of things. $100 games, smaller games slash smaller budgets, uh, PC day and date, multi-platforms, right? Where first parties go third parties. I think all those can help in varying ways. And, and like, I think all those in the right context could be a solution i don't know i don't think any of them are the solution I there think, is no turnkey solution to this yeah there's no switch to i think the games industry is just in a place where things are shifting quickly from what they were just a few years ago and what they were even a decade ago right and like i think right now it is about surviving and adapting the i think one of the big things right is games of service and how that has been a thing that companies have been trying to chase right and like even even within that the companies that are able to do it, the companies that have done that successfully, even we look at a Destiny 2, for example, and even that's not able to go. Like that, we've seen layoffs at Bungie, even at Epic, we've seen Fortnite, maybe the biggest games in the service right now, we've seen layoffs there as well, right? Like nobody's safe on that side, let alone coming out of a, and coming quote unquote out of a pandemic, which I know we're still in a yeah. pandemic, right? But going into 2020, there was a big shift in the amount of people that were playing games a bunch of people were coming to video games right and you saw a big spike in terms of revenue in the, in the uh in, in those years where everybody was staying at home and and were playing games you saw a large interest coming out of that right like a lot of that seems to be dipping and when you have that combined with people's attention not being able to be split between all these different releases that are coming out i think you're seeing a lot of these dominoes falling at the same time and uh, companies not being in a, in a place where they can account for all that. And so you're seeing a lot of layoffs. You're seeing a lot of people not having the uh, uh, money to spread around. And then also, like, at the same time, you're seeing, like, a lot of bad decisions from higher-ups, right? Like, we look to towards Embracer is like, damn, like, y'all are making these big, uh, big bets, making these big deals, and they're not panning out the way that they should because you're just spending money like like crazy and you're you're seeing these result in the layoffs that, that they are on the Embracer side, right? PlayStation, another story, but even still, it's like, yeah, like the video games industry in terms of like what you do in terms of strategy is kind of crazy right now because nobody can predict what the right strategy is. At least that's what it feels like to me. Yeah, uh, the chat's been popping off with a lot of interesting thoughts and opinions and things like that. It is worth pointing out that, of course, layoffs are not a video game exclusive. Mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing Bell Media in Canada lay off a whole bunch of different people, yada, yada, yada. So finding a magic bullet would never be the solution. To talk about games, though, and get into it, right? Everything you're saying is true. Everything uh, is right there. Back to, you know, Onimus Primes here, you know, $100 games, smaller games, smaller budgets. It's like, yes, 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 yes. But the biggest problem is where capitalism in video games leads. And it leads to shareholders. And it leads to this article, you know, that I'm pulling from VGC that multiple people, but it's talking about a $10 billion loss. Mm. And what does that be? And this is sadly... When you're talking on that level, on that scale, it isn't a mom and pop thing of like, all right, cool, we'll batten on the hatches and we'll get through this. You know, we'll get we'll get to the other side in a year and we'll do this. Da, da, da. It's like, no, like the shareholders are gambling. They're like, you know, the stock market is a casino for all intents and purposes, right? Yeah. And these are people who want to see return on their investments and they want to see this actually go. And so you then have these business decisions being reflected in this. I think it's very interesting and very telling to read and, and digest everything we got here, right? Herman to put out the note to staff talking about we've canceled several games that are in our development. Sometimes great ideas don't become great games. Sometimes a project is started with the best intentions before shifts within the market or industry result in a change of plan. Then look at what's happening here, right? As you see place uh, London, London Studios, right? Mm -hmm. Just being shuttered. That's the pitch. And they, of course, are the people who infamously did the getaway. I've seen them talked about with uh, SingStar. Blood and truth. Let's, uh, they, this, they were the only studio making, a PlayStation first-party studio making VR games. Yeah. So you look at this, like, sometimes Project with Best Intentions shifts with the marketer industry. VR is not what PlayStation thought it would be. They made a gamble on it. They did it when they, they had the best intentions, when they had the most money, when they had all the stuff behind them. And now we're getting into a leaner time, a leaner time, right? Mm -hmm. But a $10 billion loss, which means 
like fucking decisions have do to be what in. we do and make video games. Yeah. Don't worry about this crazy tech and this shit. Get out of that. There was a report uh, a while ago from Ethan Gotch where he was talking about PlayStation and some of the decisions internally being discussed in, uh, I think, London Studio and Media Molecule were the two that are being talked about. It's like we got to... Uh, we're potentially at some point probably shutter one or both of these studios, right? And like, it seems, yeah, now we're at the place where it's London Studio. And London Studio, you know, they made Blood and Truth for PSVR, for PS4, right? Currently, at least up until now, right, they were working on a uh, live service game, like a, a fantasy uh, co-op game that took place in London was their next project, right? And like, a lot of people and a lot of studios, right, with where we're at right now and the, the, the economic status of the industry, let alone the tech industry, let alone just yeah. the economy yeah. in general, a lot of people aren't going to get to that place. Like right now, I worry if Media Molecule is going to get to that place where they're able to put out their next game, right? And you work your way yeah, through percent. PlayStation Studios. Like those are... Those are PlayStation Studios that we associate with. Oh, man, they, they make different stuff, they make weirder stuff, right? Like, Dreams, still a critical hit, right? Dreams is still one of the most incredible things I've ever played in my life. Yeah. But, yeah, it wasn't the financial success that a Spider-Man is. But even as we work our way through PlayStation Studios, like, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we're having this conversation a year from now about a Blue Point or about, like, one of those Blue bigger, Point, wow. bigger studios that, like, isn't you're making Spider-Man or isn't you're making God of War or Horizon, right? Like, I, like there's going to be a point where PlayStation runs out of, like, these kind of studios to shutter and it is we are running out of money we really got to lock in and in the way that we talk about embracer being like we got to exploit lord of the rings playstation is going to hit the point where they're like spider-man god of war horizon nothing else like and who do we need to cut so to make that happen fucking crazy is that we say all that you see playstation or sony london get shuttered here right and then you still see layoffs at those naughty dog yeah you still see layoffs at gorilla you still see layoffs at insomniac right now i think the other thing to double back on here and, and talk about what, that we've talked about was this live service push. We're doing 12 games. Okay, you know what? We're, we're pumping our brakes on some of that. We're going to slow it down to six, some of the conversations. All right, we're canceling Last of Us. All right, maybe Insomniac was doing something online, Spider-Man. Like, there clearly have been these gestating projects that I think, whether you want to say we're right or wrong or we judge too harshly or whatever, I think as soon as the word got out that they were trying to make this live service push, we were all, and I'm, I'm including you, the audience, like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Why? That's Why would you do that? That's not anybody who's watching and listening to this show day after day of us reading about all these live service games struggling, how hard it is to do a live service game. Why would you think the future is there? Now, granted... Again, there's a boardroom. There's people who are trying to figure out how to make these moves, and they're making moves, that, you know, two, three years ago, four years ago, we should get into this. There's money in those hills. That would be great to future-proof our business in some regard, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get here four years later, like, fuck, no, that is not the chance. Look at all the dead bodies littering this. Shit, fuck, cancel those games. Then you got get rid you got to get rid of those people. And again, if that's what the scuttlebutt on the inside of this is all going to be, that it was like, the good times were rolling during COVID, as we already talked about. Record profits, all these things. The PlayStation 5 is a runaway success. It's setting records. Da, 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 da. Cool. Let's double down and invest in the next big thing. And you think the next big thing might be VR. It might be live service. For us, with no skin in the game, to sit here and be like, they're not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, all it takes is PlayStation 2 stumble onto their own Fortnite, which I know is not easy, and I don't think it, it is something they could have done, but... Maybe they would have. And all yeah. it takes is that one thing to work. But guess what? You just gambled fucking 900 people's lives. And again, tip of the iceberg, 900 people's lives. Uh, it, today's 900 people's lives. Not the layoffs that have already happened that we've talked about yeah. on, across multiple studios in the PlayStation realm. And not what I also am sure we will see as we continue to go forward of a media molecule, a blue point, another... Per it's, you know, to go back to Ponimus's question, right? What's the solution? $100 games? Games that are smaller on a smaller budget? PC? Like, any of those could be solutions, mm -hmm. but you need someone saying, all right, I'm grabbing the wheel. This is the course. This is what we believe in, and we are going to weather the storm. I just don't believe shareholders and boards of directors have that kind of fucking gut anymore. Mm -hmm. I just don't. It does not seem that's the case. Nobody seems to be able to say other than the independent studios, the smaller studios, the double A's, I mean, not the indies, but the independent studios to be like, no, fuck you. We're Arrowhead and we're going to work for nine years on this game and it's yeah. going to be fucking awesome. We don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, they're able to say that and do that and commit to that, it seems, whereas everybody else. But I say that and then look at, like, fucking Supermassive. They're laying people off this week, too. I mean, like, the the it's like the hard, hard armchair um, uh, CEO thing, right? Mm -hmm. 
is really tough to do. Like, I mean, we do, I, I, or being a CEO is really tough to do, right? In terms of like making, the, me. making the decisions that are going to take a gaming company su- to success, right? Like yeah. we'd play armchair a lot of time. And like, that's because, you know, we're on podcasts. We talk about this stuff. It's fun to talk about. It's fascinating to talk about. There's a lot of interesting things here in terms of what the strategy is in video games. But I think the fact of the matter is when we're talking about PlayStation first party, right? And like, what is the right thing to do in terms of, all right, let's not do live service. Let's stick with the big budget, uh, big production games that we do. But then we look at the numbers of what the budgets are of these games, as we've seen by the like leaked documents. We've seen all this shit, yeah. right? Like we know how much they're spending on making these games. And then we see what the return is on what they actually make to make, uh, to make these games. Right. And like, you look at that and you go, oh, I kind of, at least for me, I look at that and I go, I kind of get why they're trying to make this live service thing work. Because if they, if they can get one Fortnite, like if they can get the one hit to then fund the, what they're doing with God of War, what they're doing with Horizon, what they're doing with these other studios, then it might all be worth it for them. But it is a gamble, right? And to your point, a lot of the shareholder shit is a casino. It is them having to take chances to go, all right, like... We are spending a lot of money to make Spider-Man. We're spending a lot of money to make God of War. And we're doing this in hopes that we sell you boxes. We're doing this in hopes that we're selling you consoles. What happens when the consoles aren't selling? That's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. Where the consoles, obviously the consoles are selling, but they're not, they're not meeting the expectations that they want them to meet. Yeah. What so is the business? What do you do with the business You now? make the money up somewhere else, right? Yeah. And that's where you look and you go, okay, Haven Studios. Yeah. What are we, do, do, and does someone in PlayStation right now Actually, and this is, sounds so insulting, and I apologize to the developers working on it, but stick with me because I'm not insulting you. I'm insulting PlayStation. Inside of PlayStation, are there people in the positions of power that fully fucking believe in fair games, or is that a line item that they're going to go, we need to fucking get more profitable, so get rid of this thing that we are working on that nobody mm. knows about, and there is no IP. You, you said all they needed was one hit. They needed one thing. Like That should have been Last of Us. Yeah. I, again, this isn't, again, me criticizing Naughty Dog. It's me being like, they couldn't find the fun in it. They tried. They did all their things. It would have changed the studios. They said, yada, yada, yada. Like, and it didn't work out. That, I think, is a, that's not, you know, death by a thousand cuts and yada, yada, yada. That is a fucking critical blow. That is a critical hit to PlayStation's entire strategy. Because I'm sure they were thinking, fuck, The Last of Us? Let's say, just call it the third game. It's yeah. got all these fans. It's got the HBO people coming in. Yeah. People love, you know, they. I see Call of Duty in Warzone and the way that's infiltrated the mainstream. Last of Us as an IP has done that. If we could get just a fraction of that to come play that on PlayStation, on PC, we are suddenly generating income every day off of microtransactions, battle And packs, this is where whatever. I go back to, on um, PS Love You this last week, we had a discussion about, like, Cool. Speaking of which, Kevin, put PS I Love You up on the wall. Yeah, just put it on leave, the wall. Leave the Games Daily stuff down here, but we're having a great PlayStation. I want, I want my PS I Love You wall. I did there the, it is. I did the, oh, can, you not, can we leave the, the, wall, the TVs they're up? Like, they're like tied together. Oh, then don't uh, do it. Go back to Games well, Daily. Hold on, go back I'll, I'll figure it out. All right. Well, I, go back to it. Games Daily while I figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we did the, the episode of, you know, were we wrong about PlayStation's live service question? One of the questions I asked on that episode was, is Helldivers 2... If PlayStation is able to put out like each of these th- each of these uh, fair games uh, marathon, all this stuff is able to live up to the success that we've seen with Helldivers Two, which we all agree is a big success. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, is that enough for PlayStation? Yeah. Even seeing Helldivers Two over deliver, and in my eyes, probably not. Right? Like sure. you're talking about what we're seeing with all these layoffs. We're talking about like what the expectations of live service are. You're talking about them going, we're going to put in sixty percent of our budget into live service to do this thing. Helldivers Two. As we look at as a objective success, like this is killing it. This is over exceeding the budget, like all this stuff, right? And like people are playing it and not only people, people playing it, people are loving it and like evangelizing it and are role playing on Twitter talking about super earth and the democracy yeah. or whatever. I don't, I don't know if it actually is a democracy. You know, you know, is it? You know, okay. Yeah. It, people are, are, are doing all that stuff. If PlayStation puts out four Helldivers 2s, that's still not one Fortnite. <laughs> like that's still not what you'd want to have with Last of Us Online and see that blow up beyond your expectations. And this is a question or a comment, I guess, from CJ over on the super chats. Wouldn't more double A games also reduce the workforce, right? Yes, no. Like again, we're into this like the most speculative we're in charge of PlayStation. Yeah, yeah armchair yeah, CEO type. Where it is suddenly if I was to if 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 again I, Greg, they come down and like, you know, Jim Ryan's gone, Greg. We need a new president and CEO. It's you. I get in there. I'm like, great. Suddenly, and, I, and they're like, this is what we need to do. We need to make money. We need to do all these different things. I'd be like, cool. We need to make more games that are quality. Yep. We need to make them faster. And so I would look at it and go, 
just I'm waving magic wands here, but be like, where are you in production with whatever you're doing, Naughty Dog? Cool. Let's take these other people, break them into two teams. Let's do a game jam, come up with ideas that are smaller things that we could get out. Let's I'm saying we I still want the tent pole triple A big ones we can do and we can have, you know, the as they called it out here uh, in the layoffs, right? The SID, uh, SIE support teams that move studio to studio, helping people finish their games. We have that thing still swinging between all the big ones, closing off these AAA games with you. But then let's get a few smaller things going. Let's honestly, I'm not fucking reinventing the wheel here. Let's steal from Xbox. Obsidian is still making something humongous, but they also make a pen Pentiment, right? Like mm -hmm. we're looking at Tango Gameworks. They're making something big, but they're also making Hi-Fi Rush. Like let's do that. But with all due respect to those two IPs, let's do it with PlayStation properties people care about. Yeah. Let's, let's make small. Uh, it's like, why aren't they? Why are making a small Sly game, a small Jack? Yeah. Game, like, why game? are we making a Jack and Daxter? Why aren't we making another Uncharted, right? Like, I understand that these are games that are tied to their studios or whatever it is, right? But I think in the, well, the way you're saying, if I'm PlayStation, I am going, all right, let's divide and conquer. I'm looking looking at insomniac and going all right insomniac you are the kings at this shit you put you put out four games on ps5 already like you put out a lot of three games with like another one coming like you put out a lot of games we're gonna make this your regular rotation we're gonna try and like foster you as a studio that's gonna put a pet out put out a game every two years and so in 20 let's say in 2025 will fall we're gonna want venom from you and then in 2027 we're gonna want wolverine from you and then 2029 we're gonna want another game like we're turning insomniac into that kind of and these are all games that are gonna be eight hours long we're not gonna make a fucking yeah. 20 hour video yeah, they'll game be cheaper they're not gonna yeah. be 70 bucks you know yeah I mean? like Put them out for a 50 bucks or like a 60 or ex explore the spectrum of what your price range can be. I'm going to Naughty Dog and going, hey, <laughs> like, what year are we in? It, the, the Last of Us 2 came out in 2020. It is 2024. If your game is scoped to be like a fucking six hour development cycle or six hour, six year development cycle and a 30 hour video game, we're like after this next one, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> like we're lightening up. Like some of this stuff isn't worth it if we're gonna lose out on these studios and lose out on this workforce, not to lay everybody off. I want to get to story number two, which is related to everything we're talking about, but I also want to bring in this just quick aside, I feel, from DJ Kenta, who super chats, thank you so much, and says, I read on the verge that Sony is testing PlayStation VR 2 on PC. Can that, if anything, save that wing of Sony, or is it time to stop the dream of VR? We've already talked about this earlier in the week on the PlayStation VR 2's anniversary. They put up a blog post where they talked about some games and said, and, you know, we're working on trying to get it to PC. And so many people, I feel, and I could be wrong, ran in the different direction of what I thought is the right direction where they were like, Oh, see, they're trying to do this. This is incredible. They're trying to, I was like, they're trying to get this working. So people will buy these fucking headsets so they can stop making these headsets. They got headsets just sitting around. They're fucking closing the studios that are known for working on VR games that made a great VR game. Like Sony is trying to divest. I, yeah. in my, my belief, they are doing this so that they can say to PlayStation or to say to VR players, Hey, here's a cheaper headset assumedly here's a library of games we've had or it works with whatever great you buy them and just get them out of here we're fucking done with this we're not going to be a part of this because again we're talking about i don't want to say a ruthless or cutthroat playstation but they are cutting they are cutting dead yeah. weight trying to get away from it playstation vr is not successful enough for them to sit around and be like listen we're getting rid of 900 jobs we're trying to find profitable games but we still want you making experimental vr shit no yeah I mean, there's, yeah, they're sitting there with like VR sitting on the other side being like, yo, what are we doing this thing with this yeah. thing, right? Like, how do we do something with this? And it's I think, like, we did next to nothing with it. We need to do even less with yeah. it. Yeah. And if I'm looking at the bullet point features of why are, why is somebody going to buy a PSVR 2 or what is somebody going to do with the PSVR 2 that they already have? First party games aren't on that bullet point list. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. unless you're talking about Horizon Call of the Mountain, right? Which is like the one PlayStation Studios game. And if that's not going to be a bullet point, I think being able to play uh, user PSVR 2 on PC is the bullet point you add to be like, all right, well, there's something. Like, I, if somebody told me that they they wanted to get a VR headset and they're thinking about PSVR 2 to play on their PC, I'd be like, all right, I guess. Yeah, yeah go for it. Like, I guess that's a fine fine option. If, that's I mean, something. I, and then granted, you know, we're skewed and we're very, uh, we wear a heart on our sleeves about VR in general, right? Mm -hmm. You're right. I think, I think all of us, I, I, we're like, it's cool. I hope it does well. And then over the years, it just hasn't. Yeah. If anybody was to come up to me and be like, hey, I'm, I, I want to get into VR, I'm thinking they PlayStation VR does whatever they're doing. I'm thinking if they're selling them cheap, I'm thinking I mean, absolutely not. Get a Quest Three, be wireless. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? No, this isn't the way to go. Yeah. Number two on the road. Actually, before I get to number two, I'll remind you at the kind of funny membership. Of course, if you want 
each and every episode of PSI Love You XOXO Games Daily ad free. Uh, you can get your kind of funny membership on Patreon or on YouTube. Of course, you'd also get the ability to watch us record the podcast like the kind of funny games cast we're doing this afternoon. You'd also get my daily vlog series, Greg Way, where I get deep sometimes. Uh, however, Whoa. guess what? You're not using your membership right now. So here's a word from our sponsors. This episode's brought to you by Avatar Braving the Elements. We know you love talking about all things TV, film, and pop culture with us, so there's another podcast that we think you're going to enjoy. It's called Avatar Braving the Elements, and it's Nickelodeon's official companion podcast to Avatar The Last Airbender. Y'all already know Barrett loves Avatar. He thinks it's one of the best coming-of-age heroes journeys out there that perfectly blends enticing action, great comedy, and social commentary that's all backed by great art style and an iconic soundtrack. Each week, host Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, rewatch every episode of The Last Airbender. They're joined by special guests like the cast, super fans, and even the creators of Avatar, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitzko, for a deep dive and behind the scenes look into the Avatar verse you can't get anywhere else. Whether you're a longtime bender or new to the series, jump into the epic world of Avatar with Avatar Braving the Elements. Listen to Avatar Braving the Elements on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Y'all need to check out Kind of Funny Game Showdown, our weekly video game trivia game show. You can watch live on YouTube or on Twitch every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. But now, thanks to popular demand, Kind of Funny Game Showdown is available on podcast services. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else, please subscribe and rate the show five stars. It really helps us get Kind of Funny out there. And we couldn't thank you enough. We aim to make this a video-only show, so many of the games we best enjoyed watching on YouTube. But despite that, enough of you guys asked for audio versions, so we're making that happen anyways. Of course, that also means if you have the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon, you will now also get the audio version of the show ad-free. No matter how you're watching or listening to Kind of Funny Game Showdown, thank you. And if you haven't checked it out yet, there is no better time than now. We're already many episodes into the show, so you can catch up now on YouTube or the brand new podcast version of the show. If you love what we do, please get the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or on YouTube to get the show ad-free. If you just want to support us for free, please subscribe and rate Kind of Funny Game Showdown on your favorite podcast service now. Number two on the Roper Report, Sony reportedly cancels a Twisted Metal live service game as part of mass layoffs. This is Wesley Yinpool at IGN. Sony has reportedly canceled an unannounced Twisted Metal live service game as part of today's mass layoffs. Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier said the game was in early development at UK studio Fire Sprite, which Sony had earlier confirmed is affected by the job cuts. According to Schreier, the Twisted Metal game, quote, wasn't yet greenlit, end quote. Herman Hulse, head of PlayStation Studios, confirmed some games had been canceled as part of a, quote, reevaluation of how we operate, but failed to name them. We looked at our studios and our portfolio evaluating projects in various stages of development and have decided that some of those projects will not move forward. I want to be clear that the decision to stop work on these projects is not a reflection on the talent or passion of team members. Our philosophy has always been to allow creative experimentation. Sometimes great ideas don't become great games. Sometimes a project is started with the best intentions before it shifts within the market uh, industry uh, result in a change of plan from earlier. I think this is one that was going to be cursed from the start anyway. Like I'm frankly, I'm not somebody who has like the nostalgia for Twisted Metal. Like I played Twisted Metal. The nostalgia. You got to hit Peacock show. To that go is true. Uh, you do have Anthony Mackie doing Anthony Mackie things in that show. Um, obviously, I, pl I played Twisted Metal as a kid at friends' houses and yeah, stuff, yeah. and I was like, all right, this is cool. But I think from the get go, even the when this game first started being reported years ago at this point, even then we were like, oh, cool. Like I guess the Twisted Metal. All right. Like I guess we'll see how this goes, and like kind of learning about the live service push for what the PlayStation's live service plan is. You start to put the pieces together, and you're like. All right, like a twisted metal live service. All right, I guess <laughs> let's see what this is. And then there were more reports about how it started off at the Destruction All Star Studio, and then PlayStation was like, "Ooh, actually, Destruction All Stars that wasn't great. Let's give it to Fire Sprite." My question would have been like, if, "Did anybody at Fire Sprite like?" And I don't, I don't want to assume, right? But like, of course, if this is a project that was being shifted around and given to these people and was part of this live service thing. Were there people at Fire Sprite that were like, yeah, this is going to be a banger for us. Like, we're super excited to make this Twisted Metal video game that's going to be a hit and all this stuff. I'm sure maybe some people were like, oh, yeah, I like Twisted Metal as a kid. Let's work on Twisted Metal. But it doesn't strike me as something that was going to be the next big thing out of PlayStation. You think not, right? Maybe, you know, trying to ride the popularity of the show would have been like the 
thing to it reinventing it a classic ip as we talked about bringing other stuff back and there's crazy people who like love love twisted metal and i get it yeah. i'm not trying to take away from but like vehicle vehicular it's, combat in 2024 it's more for me the fact of am i really that short on this tether it's really the point for me that you want to talk about another studio of course they've already talked about layoffs here at fire sprite right you're obviously this would be connected to the twisted metal thing but again they were the ones who made the call of the mountain. Yeah. They were the ones who made the PlayStation VR. Mm. thing. You want to talk about like really like painting a studio into a corner where you're just not giving them the, what they need to succeed to really show what they can do. It's the same thing for London studio. Like where we're talking about, okay, cool. You made blood, blood and truth, a great VR game, a great VR experiences took too long to open doors, but I understand you're hiding and loading. And then it's like, okay, cool. Now you're working on this fantasy thing. Right. And you got people, you have a concept art and people are stoked about it. And then just killed in the crib. The Twisted Metal killed in the crib. Yeah. Like, how long is Fire Sprite going to be around? What do they got them doing? Mm. Are they just going to be doing support stuff on others? Like, where does that go? Like, and if they do, slash when, they do go, okay, cool. We are fucking done with VR. All, like, what does yeah. that mean? And not, I'm, I'm extrapolating that those people were working on that, but just a dark day to see so many different talented devs out there, like, broken. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, the are you safe or are you not safe? Who on your team is safe and it wasn't safe? Yeah. Like, you know, I think the thing we lose a lot with um, remote work is, you know, I remember when there were layoffs at IGN and people got pulled into conference rooms and came out in tears and got to say goodbye. You know what I mean? Remote work, you send an email to somebody and it bounces back. You're like, oh, fuck, you're gone. You know what I mean? Like, they don't, they're not going to send out a cast list of these are the people that are gone. You hope that your managers are able to get there and tell you, but like, it's a fucking, this, this fucking year, the last year, just mm-hmm. where we are in the industry is as, again, with the video game industry seems to contract and then to the point from the very, very beginning from Ponimus, right, of wrestle with what is the way forward to try to get back to these record profits that we all need. You know what I mean? A little money's not a lot. We need a lot of money. Yeah. So how do we get back there and what do we do with that and da-da-da? And again, it all speaks back to these bets that were taken, which are industry, and I would even go the tech industry you know, taking a gamble and trying to find new technology and yada yada is a big part of it, but it just seems like it just blew up on so many people this this time around. Yeah, I, again, it makes me scared for what the conversation is a year from now, two years from now, when we're talking about what the what what the economy looks like in general, but then also for PlayStation and stuff, right? And how does this affect other studios? Because to your point, yeah, like we were talking about a London studio that was working on a co-op thing. Yeah, we're talking about a Fire Sprite that was working on uh, uh, Twisted Metal. When you go down the list, and you know, I gave Bluepoint as, as, uh, as an example, but it seems like PlayStation here is working from a, <clears throat> all right, like who's working on the more experimental pop projects for us? Who's working on the smaller projects for us? Start with them and then work their way through. And like on that list is a team of Sobe, right? And like yeah. the studios that I think are could be on the precipice of putting out like in the way that, I always look back at 2017 to 20 through 2020 for PlayStation PlayStation with so much nostalgia, even though it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we're in 2024, so it kind of was long ago. But, <laughs> um, you know, like a, that was like a state where we were seeing, oh, man, Sucker Punch is putting out Ghost. Gorilla is putting out Horizon. Like these are cool new IPs coming from these studios that we like. They're getting but, to experiment. They're getting to create. They're getting yeah. away from feeling like they have to make another if it's make another kill. And it would be so dope to see London Studio become one of those studios, right? Or Fire Sprite become one of those studios. And like Fire Sprite's still around, right? Like they still could, but with the Twisted Metal game being canceled, yeah, what are they going to be doing here, right? Um, and yeah, I'd love to see Team of Soul become that with Astrobot. And Astrobot, thank God, has gotten a chance to shine with Astro's Playroom on the PS5. I want to see them put out a full, a full game. The more we see these things, the more I get, get scared of the idea of PlayStation being like, let's tighten up. Let's make these big games. Let's make the things that we know are surefire hits. And not only let's make these big games. I want yeah, my, you know, again, I, you know, we're uh, prognosticating here and worrying about slippy, sl- slippery, slippery slopes, slopes that yeah. may never happen. But like, let's tighten up and let's just make sequels. Let's bet on the things we already know people want. Let's yeah. not do new ideas for new ideas. Let's do, and even though it's not a new idea, but a Hell Divers two, a yeah. second part, Rise part. of the Ronin, Rise of the Ronin, right? Like let's. Let other people take those chances and we just help fund them. But again, the word coming out of DICE, and this isn't a PlayStation specific thing, this is an industry specific thing, is like the money's starting to dry up on that front of actually getting out and funding different projects. So it's mm-hmm. like, where are we going to be? Let alone like, you know, this month on Games Daily, right? One of the stories has been this idea that we were not, we're not going to get a major Sony first party uh, game until April of next year, right? Like that's what they're targeting. Does this affect that? Are any of these canceled projects that game that, that's going to be there in April 25? Do the layoffs then set those things back? Like, how long before you get a PlayStation 
we're Naughty Dog, we're Sucker Punch, we're Insomniac. Here's this big AAA game that you know we think of as a PlayStation thing. Again, that they've let their identity become. And then I think half-heartedly we're like, well, we're going to actually change our identity to be this live service thing or have that augment this thing and then realize how hard that was and that that's just not going to be successful in 2024. Yeah. There's a question here from Matt Sanders who says, how did PlayStation get an Uncharted trilogy and last within seven years? And I think to the conversation we're ha- having, different time. Different PlayStation. You know, different like different time, different PlayStation, different scopes and budgets for video games. Video games have only gotten bigger and bigger and more expensive to make. I mean, back to like our conversation about the length of video games, even alone. Yeah. Uh, Uncharted 1 was what? Seven, eight hours to get yeah. through? Yeah, like Uncharted 2 or th- 10 for one. 2 and 3 would have been like, yeah, like maybe 12-ish hours. Lastless 1 is like 15 hours. Like combine all those you get around like 40 hours which is one video game today right like i wouldn't be surprised if the next naughty dog game somehow ended up being a 40 hour thing which will also look more technically impressive than all these games combined which will also have more performance also have like you know more marketing more all these things like it is just more 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 and so you're spending a lot more money and taking a lot more time with it and now we get to a place where yeah to make one big budget video game is a process like that is a thing that is yeah harder to make even than than that many Uncharted's and The Last of Us in that same amount of time. I mean, you figure Insomniac gets Spider Man two out the door, critically acclaimed, gigantic sales, yada yada yada. But how many people are bitching that they finished it in a weekend, right? Yeah. Like that's that's a message you don't want getting to the PlayStation. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Where it's like, all right, well, and I and I mean clearly, like it's unsustainable to let them gestate on a longer longer bigger bigger games yeah but then we get to the seven dollar price point this that and the other and where does it go and we will continue to watch and experience it all together on kind of funny games daily for now you can take off the playstation thing we're moving to story number three there was a pokemon presents today and we have everything announced thanks to taylor lyles at ign.com kevin take off the playstation thing i won't have it sullied with po- we're not gonna sully the playstation can we like come, somehow do marker over ps and put nintendo <laughs> nintendo i love you with a telestrator uh, the pokemon <laughs> company just held its first pokemon presents event of the new year lasting nearly 13 minutes with news and information on the popular franchise for the foreseeable future uh your bullet points go like this new Terra raid events in scarlet and violet start tomorrow pokemon scarlet and violet players will have the chance to do a Terra raid where they can catch one of the three final evolutions of the gen one starters next bullet point pokemon horizons the series collaboration event starts next week in pokemon go a new collaboration event between pokemon go and the anime series horizons the series uh kicks off on march 5 uh two days before pokemon horizons the series premieres in the u.s exclusively on netflix and will continue on march 11th then pokemon trading card game goes mobile uh if you are looking for another way to play pokemon on your phone and you are a fan of the official pokemon training card game I have good news. During today's presentation, Pokemon Training Card Game Pocket was announced. The game will allow you to collect virtual Pokemon cards in addition to battling with your friends. Pokemon Training Card Game Pocket is a collaboration between the Pokemon Company and a whole bunch of people don't care about. Uh, and the game is designed for those familiar with the Pokemon Training Card Game in addition to those who love pocket monsters but never played. Pokemon Training Card Game Pocket is out sometime this year on iOS and Android. And your final bullet point, A new Pokemon Legends game is out next year. We have a trailer. The last major announcement from today's Pokemon Presents was a teaser trailer for a new Pokemon Legends game. While no gameplay was shown, we do know that Pokemon Legends Z to A will be set entirely in the city of Lumino City. The name of that city should sound familiar to Pokemon fans, as it is this major city in the Kalos region. As the trailer rolls on, we turn our eyes to the boss baby. To CEO Junior, Barrett Courtney, who is up alongside Tim Gettys today for a 6 a.m. live stream reaction available on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. Barrett, what'd you think? I woke up at 6 a.m. for this. That's it. That's the thought. Well, all That's right. the well, tweet. There you go, everybody. That's, uh, you know. You're not excited for Pokemon Za? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pronounced Zah, Greg. No, it is not. <laughs> no, it is not. Is it? God damn, Barrett. The response should have been nah, and, and then been like, yeah, I am. Mm. No, I Pokemon Z. No, no okay. I, I think it's no, ZA. I'm fucking with you. I, I, I'm fucking with I, you. I fucking did. I yeah, did. <laughs> Pokemon Zah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I really liked X and Y. This is the the region that X and Y takes place in. Uh, it'll be interesting, but it's just <sighs> next year. Yeah, not much this year. I mean, no this, GBA games, no GB games. And the we thing, woke up at six a.m. 
It's announcing on the Nintendo Switch systems, plural. Oh, I don't think that's no, anything. No, <laughs> not. You it's think that's you know next year? Old hopefully, old. when they, we got a Switch Two, you know, they'll go big for that. Yeah, maybe do something big. Possibly. I mean, I if I had to guess, like the last Pokemon Legends game came out in January of that year, and so like if the next Switch is what? in March of uh, 2022. Okay. Yeah. Um, in my, I don't know why I just know that off the top of my head. Um, but <laughs> thanks for the laugh, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I could see this maybe coming out in January and then the Switch 2 coming out in March. I'm sur- I am surprised that this isn't hitting fall, which means that we're not getting like a major Pokemon thing in fall, which means that this year for Switch is about to be dead, especially I mean, the- Princess Peach. She's a ninja. Like I said, dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm excited for Princess Peach, and I'm excited for uh, Paper Mario. We'll see Mario. what you're saying when you're getting that Metroid Prime 4. And that's the thing. That Metroid Prime 4, I think, is the last hope for an exciting... Last gasp. Yeah, like, it could be like, yeah, the Switch's last Swanson. sparkle. Um, but also, like, is that going to come out? You know, like, is that... I better. I think we're all trying to will it into existence collectively. Like, there's not been a, wes- wi- whisper, a whisper from Nintendo about a Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. Like, the most we got was Metroid Prime Remastered last year. We think they're just going to magically conjure up Metroid Prime 4 yeah, after they restarted it. <laughs> like, we think it's going to magically be, ha- be ready on the last year of the Switch. God, I hope so. But five years, Barry. You know how long it takes to create a masterpiece? I couldn't, ama- I couldn't make Metroid Prime 1 in my lifetime, <laughs> let, alone, let alone a fourth one. Have you played Metroid Prime, the first one? No. Good ass video. Game. I watched Kyle Hayes play it in college on GameCube. God, I, fuck- I played it for the first time last year, the remaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it on my Switch ready to go. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of the greatest games I've ever played in my life. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> well, apparently these Pokemon games are the greatest games you've played in your life, but we'll keep track of them as we move forward. Uh, number four. I love your headline on this one. Insider Gaming has the insider <laughs> scoop on Assassin's Creed Infinity. We go to Tom Henderson at Insider Gaming. Details on Assassin's Creed Infi- Infinities. Oh, let me try again here. Details on Assassin's Creed Infinity first emerged courtesy of Jason Schreier via Bloomberg in an exclusive report published in 2021. Ubisoft has revealed a few little tidbits on Assassin's Creed Infinity since, but what what exactly the new hub entails is still somewhat of a mystery. But that's where we come in. Essentially, Assassin's Creed Infinity will be the core hub of the franchise, from which games including Red, Hex, and Invictus will be launched. Demo footage provided to Insider Gaming, under the condition that the footage doesn't go public, shows the user going from the Infinity Hub to Assassin's Creed Red within just a few seconds, picking up where they left off rather than having to boot the games up individually after falling back to the hub. The main focus of Infinity is a live service offering, which is all told via the modern day story. To start, Infinity will launch on the same day as Red and will contain several features that you would expect from a live service. The exchange will be the item shop, offering players the opportunity to purchase daily and weekly in-game cosmetics for Red's two protagonists, Noe and Yasuke. Yas- Yasuke? Yasuke. Yasuke. I know that one from Persona. Uh, in addition to the exchange. Yasuke. <laughs> or Yosuke. Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right, Yasuke right, right, is the right. one that they don't have in there. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, but I understood the ske. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you got Yusuke, that. Yosuke, Yasuke. Yeah, Nailed it. Uh, in addition to the exchange, Infinity also has the synchronization feature that allows the player to access projects for each protagonist. To explain them in their simplest form, projects are mini battle passes with a narrative behind them offering players the ability to earn cosmetic rewards. Projects will be added throughout the throughout Infinity constantly, focusing mainly on DLC and new game releases, or even as a means of sustaining player interest during any during a lack of any new content. It's understood that the current strategy for Ubisoft with Infinity is to release a mainline game every two years with smaller experiences in between. Red is scheduled for later this year, with Invictus, a multiplayer offering, being planned in 2025 and Hex for 2026. The latter title, penned as being, quote, the darkest Assassin's Creed game ever, end Whoa. quote, uh, will have a lead female protagonist, currently named Elsa, uh, for the first time since Assassin's Creed Chronicles China in 2015. Other projects include Obsidian, parentheses, a black, fl- a black flag remake, Nebula, parentheses, uh, settings based in India, Aztec Empire and the Mediterranean, Raid, a free-to-play four-player co-op this PvE, Echoes, another multiplayer <laughs> title, oh, and man. another Assassin's Creed remake are all scheduled <laughs> to release by the end of the decade. It's 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 funny when it's not happening to you, Greg. <laughs> you know, like I'm somebody who's so out of Assassin's Creed. Like I've never yeah. like Assassin's, I try I played through all of Assassin's Creed one and was like that seems fine. And I started playing Assassin's Creed two and I was like this ain't my thing. 
And so I'm just not, I'm not a Assassin's Creed person. I but read through is. all of this and I'm like, yo, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for what's happening. Y'all doubted me. I've brought up Infinity once every month and y'all are like, oh no, that probably got, that probably got quietly canceled. It's here, it's happening, and it's ruining but like, everything. But what is it still? Like, Honestly, here's my thing about it's it. It's a launcher. That's yeah, what it is. Like, it's my is thing it going to be on I, PlayStation and Xbox? And until we get to the end where they're talking about like 9,000 games by the end of the decade, yeah. I don't hate it. Like, it, mm. It's also not that exciting because like the shops that they have for horse armor and whatever armor all the time are always being advertised for what are the what's the credit helix credits right yeah like that shit's already in assassin's creed the mini battle passes sounds totally like i don't know if i would buy one but if they're there and free or if i do, it comes with one and it's just engaging i'm already playing the game why not and then as a challenge i'm sure it'll be like all right cool now if you want the fiery armor whatever you gotta you know go kill three people to get whatever the credit is. like it's if it's a reason to turn the game i i would never would but if it was a reason to turn the game back on to go do some shit to get ready for the next dlc to do this thing that could be fine that could be fun uh at one point you read that it'll be tied to story stuff too though right uh, like battle, it's basically yeah well, like yeah, like battle pass stuff is gonna tie to story stuff maybe i miss uh misheard that um but yeah i i, I am the game not, will allow you to no this is the main pokemon <laughs> <laughs> the main focus of infinity is a live service offering which is all told via the modern day story gotcha yeah okay yeah uh i imagine what this is is like uh what uh, what ubisoft is kind of like pitched like the uh oh what's the what's the modern day um oh, okay. bad guys uh the templars the temp yeah yeah, yeah. yeah uh, abstergo there was like a at the beginning of assassin's creed unity there was like you experience the beginning of the game and then you come out and you're like actually on like a Netflix platform. Like yeah. that's just what it's going to be. And I yeah, imagine like, it will be on PlayStation and Xbox. But my problem is, so we're, we're playing, we're booting up every new Assassin's Creed game via the same game. Yeah. That, it's like why? you boot up Fortnite to play Rocket League and $70. But like, it's, I think of the new games is $70 DLCs. Oh, that fixes everything. So yeah, what? I'm just gonna have a fucking. Record, I'm, I'm gonna have to a to 800 gigabyte fucking Assassin's Creed on my dad. I'm deleting that shit. Well, I'm sure you can delete that. Yeah, you can. I mean, the launcher isn't gonna be 800 gigs. I guess. Yeah. Okay. When you put it like that. To explain them in their simplest form, projects are mini battle passes with a narrative behind them. I Barrett. I don't work. I think it's literally like, hey, Abstergo's giving you this new thing to do this thing because we need to do that. I don't think it's gonna be like an actual like, and I mean, you know. Ubisoft's proved me wrong once or twice, so we'll see. But I, I don't think they would lock like, oh, fucking find out who your dad is if you buy this battle pass. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, yeah. I think it could be cool if done right. Like me booting up this Assassin's Creed Infinity and then like I'm Delson Rowe. Is that his no, that well, Jesus Christ, that fucking Delson <laughs> Rowe's infamous second son. <laughs> Not Delson Wait, who's the main guy? In Desmond. 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 He died. Oh, spoilers. spoilers. He died so many games ago. Like where it's like, we're talking well, about like... Yeah. Then who's the guy? Who's the guy? <laughs> I you. can't believe I pulled well, Dolphin Rowe. <laughs> well, no, there, there was no the woman that was the last two in Valhalla and in, in Odyssey, Rowe. right? Remember her? <laughs> Why did I pull Dolphin Rowe? They got to get rid of all that shit. You know what I mean? Who gives a shit? Just let me go fuck so I boot up, people. I, I boot up as uh, Avatar McSmith, right? And I'm walking around and I go into one of the Abstergo devices. They still use those little those little Abstergo devices, mm -hmm. right? That I like, I lay, I lay Same in. Abstergo devices one more time. <laughs> I go into that, and now I'm playing red, and I'm a samurai, and I'm yeah. Yasuke, and I'm yeah. doing all this cool shit. Yeah. And then, then the next year, I'm like, all right, cool. Assassin's Creed Hexy is out, so I go back to the same launcher, and once again, I'm I'm Desmond McSmith, and I'm walk and I walk up to the other the other Abstergo device. And there's gonna be some layered thing on top of it of what you're doing. I'm gonna boot up. Whatever. It's gonna have like one of those like Apex Legends like or Fortnite I mean, like, cutscenes. The way you're talking about it sounds dumb as shit. Exactly, because <laughs> <laughs> that's how they're gonna do it. Uh, we will wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe we were right all along, and Infinity's dead, and Barrett's wrong, but we'll find out. Uh, however, bless. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of all this extremely large news. If I want so something big. smaller, say the smallest news items I needed to know about, where would I go? You'd go to the last story, the We News Channel, where we cover all the small news items you need to know about. Number five. I don't like the stomach the rub. Wii news. <laughs> uh, from gamesindustry.biz, uh, Bellatro grossed $1 million in eight hours. It became PlayStack's fastest selling game to date and was profitable within one hour of being on sale. Take fucking note, every laying everybody off. God, <laughs> like, just, yeah, just I mean? make one of the greatest card games I've ever played in my life. Just do that. 
Uh, TMNT Arcade Wrath of the Mutana is coming to Xbox, PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC on April 23rd. Is that a typo or is that Mutana? Muta mutant? Mutanta? Mutata? Well, it's mutants. I thought maybe you were trying to write mutants, but you, they wrote mutants. I mean, I copied and pasted it, but I also copied and pasted it from an account that also often has typos. Got it. Uh, Stardew Valley has sold more. Wrath of the Mutants. <laughs> <laughs> Stardew Valley has sold more than 30 million copies as of February. I think that was Noble. Noble always does this to me. Stop it, Noble. <laughs> Spell check. 2024, 19 million copies alone on PC. <laughs> Joey Noel is stoked. And I'm stoked, ladies and gentlemen, that you joined us for this episode of Kinda Funny Games Daily. Of course, five on YouTube, Twitch, and podcast services around the globe. If you want to get the most out of Kind of Funny Games Daily and support us, an 11-person independent team in San Francisco, California, get that Kind of Funny membership either on YouTube or Patreon. Of course, on either platform, you get each and every episode of Games Daily ad-free. You'd get the other podcasts ad-free. You get to watch us record the podcast live as we record them like the Kind of Funny, uh, no, the Kind of Funny Games cast this afternoon. And of course, you get my vlog series, Gregway, each and every day. Oh, I thought we were riding that the whole way. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> uh, if you don't have the membership, no big deal. Like, subscribe, share, leave a rating, tell your friends, go to your mom's house, subscribe to the YouTube channels there. You know what I mean? Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>